This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. In this chapter, we're going to look at capital gains tax reliefs for individuals. Now, because capital gains tax has been simplified to some extent, i.e. its proceeds minus cost equals gain, you will find a lot of reliefs in your TX exam. Um, we're going to look at the main ones, and they won't all be tested. Um, there are some that come up more than others, but you need to be aware of all of them. It is a very important chapter. Now, some of them, um, some of these reliefs, they reduce the rate at which the tax is paid. OK, that's these two. And that's the one that you are most likely to come across. And that's the one you are least likely to come across. It says some are exempt. So this one has exemptions in it. It is not all exempt, but there are exemptions in it. And some of them defer the payment of tax, and that's these two. So these three, that one very much so, because it's the only one that is available to limited companies. None of the others are available to limited companies. So if you're going to get a company question with the capital gains in it, it might have rollover in there. Uh, gift relief is obviously only for individuals and residents and letting relief we're going to look at as well. We're going to start at the top with the business asset disposal relief. So this uh, relief is available for individuals who dispose of either all or part of their business. And basically the first £1 million of any qualifying gains that an individual makes, okay, in their lifetime. It's a lifetime limit. And if that's the case, then they only pay tax at 10%, regardless of what their income tax position is. Any gains in excess of that will go straight to high rate. Okay, tax tables. Just to say again, the tax tables are at the front of every exam. Make sure that you read them, use them, and don't ignore them always, and never guess. So your investor's relief, which is slightly different, you get £10 million um, for that. That's the lifetime limit of £10 million at a rate of 10%. This has got pence on the end, ignore the pence. This is only £1 million, And again, it is at 10%. That's your, what we call bad relief. So in order to qualify it said they had to be qualifying gains so these are the benefits what are the qualifications or conditions that we need to make sure exist before we can claim this um, relief so these are the main reliefs um, these are the, sorry the main conditions okay you must have owned the asset for at least two years prior to the date of disposal. And there are three situations. Where you can have, if you've owned it, owned it for two years, where you can have that relief. This is number one. This is the main one that you will come across. You're going to get rid of whole or part of your business run unincorporated. So that's a sole trader or a partnership. Now, it's not available, it says there, if a trader simply disposes of an asset used in a business. So, for example, I'll give you an example. Three situations where you own three cupcake shops. Those three cupcake shops, you decide that cupcake shop number one, you are going to refurbish it. You're going to get rid of all the um, interior and you are then going to refurbish it. You can't have bad relief on selling the assets within that, the ovens, um, the tables, the chairs. You can't have that. The only way you could have it where it's part of a business, the assets themselves must be available to function on their own as a business. So if you've got three cupcake shops and you sell one cupcake shop, that cupcake shop is capable of running on its own therefore it is a business on its own and you have sold part of yours because you've sold one of three so that's kind of how that works 
The second one, individual business assets are available if you have ceased to trade. That's a different scenario altogether. If you cease to trade, then you do get bad relief on all the assets, as long as it takes place within three years of the date of cessation. That doesn't come up quite as much in this. Um, the first one is the one that comes up the most. And of this is probably the second one. So the whole or part will come up first if it comes up. The second one will be the share situation and the third one will be um, ceasing to trade because there are lots of other things that need to take place um, for that to be possible. So the disposal of shares must be a trading company. The individual must have at least 5% shareholding and must be an employee part-time or full-time two years prior to disposal. Quite a lot of rules there and all of them have to be applicable in order to be able to claim the relief. Shares, trading company, 5%, employee, two years. Okay. So the relief must be claimed within 12 months of the 31st of January, the same as most claims, um, for 23-24. So let's have a look at example number one. 30th of September, Daisy sold a business that she ran as an unincorporated trade. Okay, so she's unincorporated trade, she sold it. Um, and she's been she's been in business for a long time. It says there she's been there since uh, 2014. The sale resulted in the following gains and losses of the business assets. So we've got two gains and a loss. Now, in December 23, she also sold a 20% shareholding in Bed Limited, an unquoted company. She had been an employee. It was more than 5%. Okay. And she acquired the more than... Um, what was the rule? Let's check the rule. The rule was 24 months. Okay. And there we have a gain. We have to work out her capital gains for 23 24. So let's see how that looks if we write it out um, in a computation. So again, always a heading, Daisy, and she's selling her business. Always put the, the heading in. So we have goodwill, we have a factory, and if you remember rightly, current year losses need to go against current year gains in full. So we have the warehouse, and simply by listing that, you don't have to, in a large extent, you don't have to remember that loss as long as you add just basically add them all together and take away what's happened in the year. So that's the sale of the business. Okay, now the sale of the shares. needs to be added in too, which gives us a total of 850,000 less the AEA of 6 gives us a taxable gains of 844,000 So those gains, we're going to get bad relief and tax at 10%. Therefore, she will pay tax 
400 pounds which is due to be paid try and put that in every time on that date so let's go back to the notes and see what further points we need to deal with so it says there that gains qualifying for the bad relief must be taken into account when establishing the tax rate that applies to other taxable gains in that year and they are deemed to firstly use any amount of basic rate band so the upshot of that is if you've got gains that are qualifying for bad relief basically everything else will be at high rate um, that's normally the case. Any AEA and capital losses should be deducted from gains that do not qualify. That's common sense. Um, you wouldn't put those two against something that's being taxed at 10% when you may have others being uh, taxed at either 20, 18 or 28%. Now, if you exceed your £1 million then the excess is subject to the normal rates just and we, there's normally uh, several columns and it says there the easiest approach to deal with questions with this relief is to keep the gains separate so let's have a look at how that works in practice with example number two and I'm going to show you the model answer with this so Anne sold her shareholding in Annie Limited for £500,000 uh, in 23-24. They had cost her £50,000 in July 1993. So that would be proceeds. Whoops. My page keeps moving. There you go. Proceeds, 500k. Less cost, 50k, which gives us a gain of 450000 you can see that quite clearly. Okay. Now she owned 100% of those shares. She has been a full-time director and she's not previously made any um, disposals qualifying for bad relief. So that will be taxed basically at 10%. So that's what that information is there telling you. But she's also sold an antique painting with a gain of £100,000. So AEA needs to go against that. It will be taxed at 20% because it's going to be higher rate by then. She's got losses brought forward. So that will go in there too. But she's got taxable income. That's irrelevant for income tax purposes because we have this massive gain. So let's have a look at how the model answer looks so that you can see how all this has played out. And as you're reading a question like this, this is the sort of thing that you should be thinking about as you're reading a question. Oh, this proceeds less cost. That's what I'm looking for. Oh, this is a hint. This tells me I've got to do this. This tells me I've got to do that. So all of that needs to um, take place. So let's have a look at the model answer. So here we have the answer and has a capital gains tax computation. And you see there are two columns there and obviously very well headed up. So that's the calculation we did in the question. Um, and there we have the gain on the painting and the deduction of the AEA and the capital loss. And you'll see then working number one that tells us what the tax is. So this 450 is at 10% and the balance on the gain on the painting is at 20% giving us a capital gains tax payable of 58,800.